Hi and welcome back to the final video in this um, KPI um, series that's looking at how we can create a list or the KPIs for each of the work orders at each of the or the number of work orders at each of the key workflow status codes. So this one here is looking at work orders which have been in fact let's go back to our presentation. So these are work orders waiting history review for greater than seven days. So the work order has been physically or technically complete and it just requires a review of the actual information. And so work orders at comp status for greater than seven days. Now one of the things that we're going to do is go and create that. And we're going to create a new, new column. And we'll call this work order. I'll we'll just call it waiting. Waiting history review greater than seven days equals if. And the first thing we're going to check for, we're going to check for two things work order. Put status in here. Status code. Work order status. I think we're going to do an in because we also need to consider work orders that are waiting for a quality. So the in is going to be comp and it's going to be wait. I think it's going to be call Q. Now that wasn't in the actual re the requirements, but it's one that I've actually just realised we need to include in here. And we'll close the close this with curly brackets. So if I go back to the to the sheet here and we go to our work order status codes, W call Q waiting for the query response related to unclear missing or incomplete work order maintenance history information. So we really want to get each of these. Um, included in this and the arm statement so and this one so it has to be one of these status codes and the second part of the arm status is that it has to be days at current status has to be greater than seven now if that's the case, the result is 1, otherwise it's 0. Here we go. Okay, so that's flagged up the work orders which have been waiting for history review for greater than 7 days. So either it's at comp or it's been rooted back to with a question. So there's, there's something that's unclear. So the They've attempted to review the history and they've found some sort of error with that information. And then we'll go and count these. So a new measure. Recorder. Uh, let's just keep the same again. Uh, waiting history review. Waiting history review. Greater than seven days. Count. Equals calculate and the expression is count rows work order variables table and the filter part of the calculate statement is going to be um, work order variables. Uh, waiting history review greater than seven days equals one. And we'll add that in. We'll add in a card here. And we can see there's loads of those. And in total, there are. Uh, hold on here. Uh, comp, ah, here we go, yeah, comp. So there's loads of these. Um, now this is 
data that I've manufactured, so it's not necessarily relevant or related to a, a, a realistic in terms of a normal work management system. It'll probably be far less than 3000 at this, at this point in time. However, that's uh, just a, an example with some dummy data there. And we will move that into here. And we can see it's made up of 2,926 that are comp and 95 that have got some sort of quality, um, been at that quality status for greater than seven days. Okay, so this is uh, the, um, the end of this particular video. So hopefully you've... Um, understood how you can go in and you can create a, if you just want a basic report that tells you, that shows you the number of work orders at each status, that's really, really straightforward in Power BI. However, if you want to put some conditions in place, and we're only really going to be interested in focusing on the work orders that have been at a certain status for more than a period of time that um, will depend on the status code, so it could be more than seven days for this one, greater than 30 days for this one. We've got something slightly different for the waiting schedule. So you can see we need to use calculated columns and measures to be able to um, add a little bit of business logic to each one of these. And it helps you focus in on the work orders that you really need to address and move forward to ensure that work progresses through the work management system. One final thing that we can do is if you want to um, move this up, be able to look at these work orders here and understand which departments have got work orders at each of these status codes. We can replace this status. We'll get rid of this work order count here. Um, and we will add in the department. And now we can see that um, each department can hone in on their particular um, list of work orders which are at each of the different KPIs. So we can see here that, for example, engineering, we've got 19 that require planning. That could be an issue if you've got an engineering project. It would be an issue for anything, really. Um, we can see that maintenance have got 71 work orders that are waiting for spares. So this just allows you to slice and dice it by department and start to foster a little bit of ownership on moving their work orders through the process. Okay, so hopefully you found this useful. Hopefully you found it interesting and hopefully... The, the, the report itself has never been form formatted. This is not a dashboard, it's just really me adding figures onto here that I've created as part of this particular exercise. Um, but um, hopefully you found it useful, and I will talk to you in another video. Thanks for listening. Bye.